Number 34. Answer the following questions. A. Without using quantum numbers, describe the differences between the shells, subshells, and orbitals of an atom. All right, so for A, they just want to talk about the, what's the difference between a shell, a subshell, and an orbital. So let's start with the biggest and work our way down to the smallest component. So the, the biggest component to talking about electrons outside of the nucleus is a shell. All right, so if I have a specific nucleus, right, and I'll shade that in, oop, if I shade that in, in yellow, the shell will tell me how far away the electron would be. Remember, maybe this could be a shell, right? This would be the first shell away from the nucleus, and this would be the second shell away from the nucleus, right? So just know that as farther and farther and farther you get away from the nucleus, the shells, you'll see that the electrons have an increasing amount of energy. So that's what the shells are discussing. Now, you should also know that within a shell, there will be one or more subshells. So it's kind of like you're talking about the bigger picture, but then inside of a shell, inside of the, you know, the probability of where the electron is, you will have more, one or more subshells. Now, what is a subshell? Well, the subshell is the actual um, shape of the orbital. So, subshell, shape. The shell, remember, is just the uh, general position of where the electron is, as farther away from the nucleus, but the subshell will tell you the shape of the orbital. All right? And for many different, there are many different subshells that have different shapes. Some are circular, some are like dumbbell figured, and more and more and more are complex. So that's what a subshell will tell you. Now, if you keep going, within a subshell, you could have one or more orbitals. Orbitals. So that's the third part. What are specific orbitals? The orbitals are the exact orientation of the orbitals. Now, inside of an orbital, there are a max of two electrons that can be inside one orbital at a time. So there's always a max of two electrons inside that are residing inside an orbital. Okay. Also, you guys should know that for the orbitals, right, some of them could have the same energy and some could have different energies. So there are some orbitals out there that have the same exact energy as the other orbitals, and there are some orbitals that have different energies compared to the other ones. This is dependent on if they came from the same subshell or not. Orbitals that come from the same subshell are, in fact, have the same energy, and that's called degenerate. So orbitals will be degenerate if they have the same amount of energy. Degener oops, degenerate. Okay. So that basically answers question A. We didn't use any quantum numbers. We just described the shells, the subshells, and the orbitals. Now for B. How do the quantum numbers of shells, subshells, and orbitals of an atom differ? Well, now we just have to put together what the quantum number for a shell is, what the quantum number for a subshell, and what the quantum number of orbitals are. For the shell, since this is the largest, can you guys guess which quantum number is the principal number? It's the n value. So the shell is always represented by the n value. So actually, instead of here, I'll just put b down here. So for a shell, it's always the n value, and that's specifically called the principal quantum number, PQN, principal quantum number. For the subshells, 
This is the L value. So this is the angular momentum, the azimuthal quantum number, or the secondary quantum number. I like to call it the angular momentum. Usually you will see that in your textbooks. So especially in OpenStax, they do talk about this one. So angular momentum. And that will tell you the shape of the orbital. And then, last but not least, you have the orbital. So whether you have multiple orbitals in a single subshell or you have just one orbital in a single subshell, that's the ML. And this is called the magnetic, whoop, magnetic quantum number. So you could think of the M in magnetic being the M for ML. And the ML will specifically tell you the orientation of the orbitals. So whether they're in the y-axis or if they're in the z-axis or if they're in the x-axis, that's all the ML's job. So it takes the L to like a whole nother level. All right? So that basically answers A and B. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I know a lot of students think that the quantum number is you know, hard to grasp, but I'm totally here for you guys. Um, we'll do more problems coming up, but I would love to hear from you guys. And if you want to click subscribe, that would be awesome too. Thank you for that. See you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.